Paul Henry came very close to not getting the role of Jerry in this movie. For one thing, in the book this movie was based on, Jerry had been an American. And for another, in his screen test for the part, Paul Henry was made up to look very Rudolph Valentino-ish, with his hair slicked down like patent leather and wearing a satin smoking jacket. Everything that Betty Davis felt was wrong for the character. She almost said no to having him play the part, and she had the power to do that, but Paul Henry went to her, said he hated the way he'd been made up for the test, so Betty got the studio to make a second test of Paul Henry, and that time she dictated the way he was to look. And indeed, he got the part, and they became lifelong friends. Up next, Betty Davis in A Stolen Life. Turner Classic Movies is open all night. Betty Davis assumes her dead twin sister's identity in a stolen life. Then James Cagney is hired to capture runaway heiress Betty in The Bride Came C.O.D. And Catherine Grayson encounters Nazi spies at a deer ranch in Rio Rita. Turner Classic Movies is heading south of the border. Hi there, I'm Robert Osborne here at the Warner Brothers Studio in Burbank, California, where for many years, you know, Betty Davis was the undisputed queen. Such a queen, in fact, she was often referred to as the fourth Warner Brother. And during that time, Betty produced a film in which she also starred, and we have that film coming up next. It's called A Stolen Life, and there's not just one Betty Davis in this movie, but two. She plays twins, one bad and one good. And interestingly, although Betty produced this film, you won't see her name on the credits as the producer, but you will see the initials BD, and that indeed stands for Betty Davis. And the reason she decided to become a producer is because she figured it was high time she was getting paid for what she was always doing anyway, fussing and fixing and doing whatever she could to make any movie she was in better, just like a producer is supposed to do. But after making A Stolen Life, she never again tried to produce a film, because as she said later, she. She realized her bosses here at Warner Brothers didn't really want her to produce anything. They only gave her the job this one time to kind of pacify her. She said they blocked her whenever she tried to make any kind of a decision or a change. One thing she did manage to do, though, as a producer, was to pick Glenn Ford to be her leading man. And this film, along with Gilda, which was also made in the year 1946, immediately turned Glenn Ford into a very important new Hollywood star. So here with Glenn Ford, Dane Clark, Walter Brennan, and two Betty Davises, A Stolen Life. 